Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Woodworking Wisdom. My name's Ben, um, and today we're going to be looking at wooden spoons. Um, I've got a couple here that I've, I've done before. Um, this is a very kind of um, open to lots of different ways that you can you could carve a spoon. Um, we're, we're using dry wood today. Um, so I've got a nice piece of cherry uh, ready, to, ready to carve here. Um, but you can carve them out of whatever you want, really. Um, you know, these ones generally are kind of, um, you know, the cooking utensil type ones are, are beech, um, a really hard and really dense timber, nice and heavy, um, and it, it's not too porous. So it's not going to take in, you know, anything you'll stir in the pot. Um, it's not going to take on any of those liquids or anything. Um, so traditionally, uh, beech, um, we're looking at a bit of cherry here. Um, and then, you know, for your kind of decorative type spoons, um, you can use what you want, really, because it's not going to, you know, not going to be too involved with food or anything like that. It could be a kind of serving for dry materials or even just something that looks nice or a nice gift. Um, OK, so the way I'm going to go about this, we're going to start by um, carving the bowl first. So the, by the bowl, I mean this kind of area here, the kind of dip or the scoop of the spoon. And I've got a whole bunch of tools here that we can use. Um, you know, it, it's really up to you. I'm going to show you a few different methods, a bit of um, powered or mechanized type of, of carving. Um, we've also got uh, a few gouges and chisels here that we can look at. Um, what else have we got here? We've got some knives, so like things like hook knives, all those sorts of things. And like I say, you'll find your own way of working and your own preferred kind of tools and things like that. We're going to go through as many as we can, um, and we're going to show you that kind of roughing out process to save a whole bunch of time of, of actual carving. Because, um, you know, let's face it, sometimes carving can be quite hard on your hands. So we're going to remove a lot of that waste just by, um, by, by cutting it on the, on the bandsaw. Okay? So that's what we're doing today. We're, we're looking at spoons. Um, our first job is to, is to carve the bowl on this spoon. I've got it held on the, the parrot vise you know, in another vice on the, on the bench here. So it's really nicely held, um, really firm. And that's important when we're, uh, when we're using carving chisels. Okay. We don't want to slip. Um, it's really important. I'd say work holding is, um, you know, is paramount when you're, when you're carving, you don't really want to be, um, you know, holding things in your hands with chisels unless we're whittling. And again, we we will look at that. So, you know, using things like uh, knives and, and things like that, handhelds. And a lot of people carve these out in the woods using axes and hatchets and things like that. So there's some really cool ways of doing this. Um, that's usually on wet timber. But like I said, we're going straight in with a piece of dry timber. Um, it's what we got in the workshop. And we've got a lovely piece of kind of straight grain cherry here. Um, and that should carve really nicely. Okay. So let's get to it. Like I say, we're going to carve the bowl, so the, the kind of um, hollow on the inside of the spoon. All right. A few gouges here, and I'm going to start off with just a, a Kirschen gouge. It's got a very gentle sweep on this one. If we come across onto this, um, this spoon camera here, you can see that really gentle sweep. Um, so this is um, a five sweep 12, which means we've got 12 mil across the gouge. And then the five refers to how deep or how much of a curve that has got. And they call that a sweep. OK, so like I say, this is a 12.5, nicely polished on the back. OK, so we've got a really nice um, soft belly on this one. And that's allowing me to come in, drop the handle and come out of the cut. But we're going to start right back here. And I'm, I'm choosing this gouge because it's got a very similar curve to what is on the um, what on this, this curve of the, of the spoon or the outline of our, our bowl of our spoon. Okay, so I'm just going to start here. I'm going to push down. And the way we're holding these chisels is quite important. Okay, so I've got one hand on the butt of the chisel here. And then my other hand, my forehand, is controlling it. So I'm using force with my right hand. My dominant hand is on the handle. And my left hand is 
kind of controlling the cut. All right. I'm going with the grain with this one. And I'm just trying to pick up on that little curve and just start to define this outside line. Okay, and I'm trying to keep it nice and clean as we go. Um, it doesn't matter too much if we come off of that line. We can always you know, make this rim a little bit smaller um, by carving away and blending in anything where we, we may have gone over the, uh, the line there. So we're live today. Any questions coming in? Um, please put them in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them. Um, okay. So you can see I'm limiting the cut with this hand. If we can come on to that main camera, Colwyn. So this hand, my left hand, is, is limiting the cut. So it's actually putting resistance back along the chisel. And this, my right hand, my dominant hand, is on the on the the butt or the hand the back of the handle and i'm applying force that way okay so limiting with this hand applying force with that one because it's really important we don't slip out of the cut that's what this hand's doing just controlling it and stopping it from traveling too far and that hand's right down on the project i'm gripping onto it or i can feel where it is and that's, like I say, it's given me a whole lot of control on the chisel. You can come across the grain as well. So somewhere here. I'm just using my finger this time to kind of ground me on the, on the project. Okay. Okay, so we've got our first question. So Jason's on the questions today. Uh, we've got Colwyn on the cameras. Um, so... So uh, Martin would like to know what size the blank is, uh, just sort of a, a rough idea. Of okay, how it is and... yeah, absolutely. So I've not actually measured this one. This is just like an offcut that we've had. Um, but I've got my rule here somewhere. Let me just grab that. I'll just grab one off the wall here, Martin. Just give us a moment. <clears throat> I should have prepared for that one. So it's just over 10 inches long or... Uh, 26 um, centimeters, 260 mil. Um, it is, <coughs> excuse me, about two inches wide. And it's about an inch and a half deep. Okay. That depth is a lot more than actually I need for this. This is going to be a, quite a flat spoon or almost like a, like a wooden spoon, a kind of traditional type wooden spoon, quite flat and thin. Okay. And that's what we're going for today. Um, you know, given a bit more time, we might have done something a bit more shapely um, with, a, with a deeper bowl, but that's going to take a bit of work to get that depth in there. Um, so this, this blank is oversized for what we're doing. Okay. This demo kind of come about um, because the, uh, we've got a canteen above us here. Um, they look after us really well. And um, they had the kind of traditional wooden spoon and it wouldn't get to the bottom of the stirring pot. So the first spoon I ever did was this one, and it's got an extra long handle on it. Okay, so you can get right down to the bottom of the pot and, and stir our lunch. <laughs> so that's where the, um, the, the, the demo was kind of born from. That was the first spoon I carved. And since then, we've done a, done a few. This one is because um, we've just started making, making a bit of fudge at home. And what we found with our wooden spoons at home it won't get into the corner of the pot. And because it's got to get so hot, that fudge, we were kind of burning it onto the pot. So I'm going to make a spoon that's got a kind of a, uh, an angle on it. It's got a little, um, you know, almost like a 90 degrees on it. And that will get right into the corner of the pot and scoop away all those bits that are, you know, going to burn. So that's where the thought of this spoon's come to. Um, so we come from, they do a great deal of spoon carving. Um, it's, it's come from a necessity of people asking for things. And um, actually, they're, they're lovely little objects. Lovely little kind of keepsakes. So really just spending a bit of time removing material from here. 
all of the um, the cuts I'm doing, my hands are behind that cutting edge, and that's really important. Okay, I'm not got one hand here in any of this business behind the cutting edge. Both hands are on the tool. Now we're going to get to a point in a moment where I'm starting to lift the grain, and I have to come back the other way as we kind of scoop down into that bowl, and as it starts to get deeper. Um, I'm going to start catching on the grain at the bottom. And that's starting to happen now. Okay, and what we don't want is to kind of tear that grain or to kind of lever it out. But you see where this, when I drop the handle now on the chisel, I can hear a crunching noise. And we start to get these kind of torn fibers coming up. Okay, so that's that's pulling the grain off. It's tearing the grain. So what I'm going to do is switch my grip round. Um, so I'm coming this way with the cut, okay? So it's coming towards me. What I might do is I'm gonna angle this a touch. So with the parrot vise, I'm just gonna swing this around and hopefully you'll get a better um, view of what we're actually trying to achieve here. So it won't actually go around to where I want it. <laughs> Um, but the gist is, my hand is going to be here. This is our limiter this time. I'm going to take a gentle cut. And this time, I'm coming towards my body, OK? And I'm using the blank as a kind of safety stop, OK? So I physically can't bring that chisel um, towards me any further. And you can see the risk. If I were to slip, you know, this chisel is coming right towards my chest here. So. Always, always, when you're carving with these chisels, make sure you're nice and safe, that your hands are out of the way, because you do have to put a little bit of force onto these cuts. And it's really easy to slip out with the chisel. So as much as we can minimize that, uh, the better. Sorry, my, my hands are in a bit in the way there. So I'm bringing these cuts back towards me now to meet up with those other ones. And we could just carry on with that. You can see I'm not taking big cuts. If I had a deeper spoon and I found that this curvature, um, if we started to get down quite deep in this, and the curvature and these two sharp wings started to dig in, then we could perhaps swap to something um, with a, a kind of steeper sweep, okay? But like I said, this is a very shallow, um, very shallow spoon. Um, this is a 11 sweep 16. So the sweep is 11 across, um, across there, and the width is 16, okay? And that's what those numbers on the actual steel of the tool are referring to. So, you can see that's taking a bigger shave in. I'm more confident to kind of dip that in and take a bigger kind of scoop. All right, little slip there. So it's very easy, even with practice, for these chisels to kind of run away. So be very, very careful because they are razor sharp and that's what you want them to be. Okay, so we're working down from either end, or you could cut the from the side for a bit of side grain, make things a little bit easier, and then you won't get those tears, you won't get that lift of the fiber. Okay, so we just keep going like that until we're down at our desired depth. Each one of these little furrows. Um, you know, he's going to get a little high spot in between each one. Um, you could come back in with another chisel, something a little bit flatter, less of a sweep, and just tidy those up. Okay. And as we get deeper down into this, we can start to introduce things like scrapers and stuff like that. So, a little bit on gouges. Um, what else could we use on this? We could use a hook knife. 
Um, I tend to use these hook knives when I'm whittling. Okay, so usually if we've cut this shape out and we've got something similar to, to, uh, to this, um, I would use this as a little kind of whittling project. So I would bring that across the grain uh, for this one. And, um, you know, again, being careful where we put our hands. And a little bit on technique with this one. Let's, um, so what I'm doing is I'm just closing the grip of my hand. Okay. Again, that's a limiter. And I'm not pulling the tool through the timber. I'm closing my grip. And I physically can't take that knife edge close to my hand. All we've got then to worry about is our other hand and keep that way out of the way beneath the project. And we can close that grip and bring that cut across. Okay, so we've got another question. David Martin would like to know how you sharpen your hook knife that you just used there because he's got one. Yeah. Having real problems getting it sharp. It is a pain, to be honest. Um, you know, these things take a lot of practice. Um, there's no kind of easy way. And because of that, that shape on the tool, that curve, um, really, we want it would be lovely to have a little jig that we could put up against, um, you know, something like Tormek or, or something like that. Um, I have done them before um, on the side of a wheel. Um, so on the side of a Tormek wheel, that's a very slow running whetstone grinder. Um, but you could use all sorts. Um, what I tend to do with all of this carving stuff is keep it sharp. All right? Don't allow it to get to that stage of, um, you know, where you need to regrind it. Um, because of the steel so thin, um, quite quickly, if you're grinding, you'll, you'll start to change the shape of the, of the steel. Um, so keep it honed, keep it sharp. Um, if it's already gone past that stage, um, then really uh, I would use something like, um, you can get profiled um, the Japanese water stones um, that have a little curve in them. Um, and they are curved on both sides. So you can polish the inside of the bevel and you can also use the, um, the kind of tapered um, hollow that it has. Okay, so that's a good one to look at. Um, I tend to keep this stropped. Um, again, very lucky we've got Tormek, we've got that rotating um, uh, strop uh, or, or, um, or hone. Um, but something like this, a little leather hone will keep it keen, um, but it's, it's um, really difficult um, thing to grind. One of the guys here might be able to have a go, um, but I just tend to pop my finger down on the um, on the steel. Okay, we've got a little strop here. Put a fair bit of pressure on, and just kick it up onto that bevel. So finger on the top, kick it up onto the bevel, and drag it towards you. And I'm kind of tipping it as I go. Okay, we've got a little score in the leather there, but that's okay. And just keep it honed. You could go away from you if you like. Um, important that whichever way the bevel's facing, that you're kind of pulling away from that cutting edge. Okay, that's really important. Otherwise, we're just going to cut into our um, leather strop or hone. Um, use a bit of um, a bit of soap, the abrasive soap. That's our blue one that comes with the rider bits and bobs. Um, and that's a cutting compound. That will actually polish the steel. But yeah, you're not wrong. They, they are a pain to sharpen. Um, it's practice. And, um, and if you've got any of those kind of mechanized Tormek type things where, where the wheel turns very slowly so you're not going to remove too much material, um, I'd say that's the way to go for, for, um, for sharpening these. All those little profile Japanese water stones, they're, they're pretty good too. So, I'm just 
bringing my other hand in here just to kind of steady this one. We're using that kind of close grip way of cutting, okay? And this is a little project I would kind of sit outside with and just slowly tinker at it. We're not rushing to complete this. You don't want to rush when you're carving anyway. This is a kind of sit on the porch type of whittling project, I would say. Certainly once we get past that roughing stage, um, we can start to um, you know, have a spoon, something like this as a blank and just whittle away at it on our own time with a little sloyd knife or or some um you know some of the flex cut knives are really nice um next thing i want to show you is um a bit of powered carving okay um i'm going to use well let me get it down and just show you what we got here this is the little wee chair this is the heavy duty um powered you know it's a rotary tool okay and you can get a reciprocating head for that as well um, I really like these uh, rotary heads, um, and we've got a lovely little saber tooth spur on there. Okay, so let's come on to that, um, that close-up camera, and we'll see that saber tooth spur. Lovely. Okay, so this is the green one. They come in different, um, different sizes and different kind of grits, if you will, or coarseness. Okay, so... Going to pop some goggles on for this. It's not likely to throw much of a shaving off. Um, it's quite dusty, um, but let's put our, our um, goggles on, make sure we're all nice and safe. And this is powered, um, you know, you've got your drive unit up there, and I've got a little pedal on the floor. Okay, so really nice, uh, really controllable. And let me just jiggle that around a bit. Let's go back to straight in our vice. Good. Again, keep it nice and solid. So as I press the pedal, you'll see that um, the unit start to um, you know, come to life. And it's variable speed. So you've got that fine um, adjustment on your foot. So as I press the pedal, uh, it comes up, and if I press it more, you'll hear the motor really ramp up. And they're nice, these things, they've got a fair bit of torque. We can remove material really quickly with this. You can smooth things out. And I'm kind of using that same grip as I did with the knife. Oops. So I was looking at the TV then. We can use that same grip we use with the knife. That kind of, um, you know, limiting grip. And just start to remove this material. Really quick. So I'm just smoothing off some of those cuts, really. We don't want to go really deep with this. Like I say, it's a... Um, it's going to be those kind of traditional wooden spoon. Using the shape of that taper as it comes up to give us that natural angle on the bowl there. And you can be quite accurate. You know, I've come up nice to that line. I'm going to bring it around here. I don't know if the camera's really picking it up, but it's not the best of finishes, okay? It's quite a rough kind of, almost like a kind of 60 grit abrasive type finish, all right? Um, so not the best finish. You can, could go finer with something like that and, um, you know, <clears throat> really bring up that finish. They do di uh, different grits. There's, there's different colors, um, so check them out. Saber tooth burrs are really nice to use. Okay. So that's not like a finishing tool. You could go on with a bit of abrasive. Um, I really like these uh, Merca um, Abronet type abrasives. That could smooth things off in there, give you a slightly better finish. Just using it in my shape of my thumb to 
you know, smooth that surface out. You could use a scraper. So I've got a gooseneck scraper here. I'm going to pick it up. That's got a really nice heavy burr on it. Jason Sharpen these. If you haven't seen Jason Sharpening of the, um, the cabinet scrapers, check that video out. He's given me a lovely burr on this. And I'm coming across at a slight angle. I'm not straight because, well, actually, that is kind of matching the, the shape of that bowl. Um, but if I do it at a slight angle, I've got a little bit more of a chance to get down into the bottom there. So you could use a scraper. Okay, and with a heavy burr like this, you could almost carve a, a bowl. This should give you a, a, a shaving. Okay, we've got quite a rough surface at the moment, so it's kind of breaking that shaving up. But as we get down to that clean material, we're starting to produce an actual cut. All right, so we've got a shaving like that. Take your time with this, you know, don't rush. Just flexing it a little bit. This is one of the thicker ones, quite a hard. This is a 0.6 a mil gooseneck scraper. And it's just allowing me with that curve to get right down in there. Okay. So we're starting to tidy up that um, that kind of uh, rough finish that we got off of our saber tooth. Um, and there's nothing to say that you couldn't, you know, pop that out. Um, this has got like a little drill chuck on it, a little um, kind of Jacobs type chuck. Um, so you could take that out. You could put in one of the little um, tapered sanding heads and get in there and sand all of that with um, with this very same tool. Um, Again, a little bit dusty, um, so we're going to um, not do that live on air um, because I'd have to put on all my, um, you know, uh, dust mask and stuff. But absolutely, you could carry on with that um, that rotary tool, um, and like I say, put different heads in there, and again, that's going to clean up that kind of bowl for you. I think a little bit more. I'm going to go back on with my um, with my chisels or gouges and just see if I can't neaten this up a little bit. And get this in a nice kind of uniform depth and shape. A little bit heavy handed with that um, powered unit. So I've got a bit of a dip down at the back of my spoon here and you can see that kind of white stuff that's what we're trying to get rid of that's any kind of tears and things like that that's what we're trying to rid ourselves of again just be careful limit those cuts and just try and um, stay on your line. I'm just trying to carve out this little white mark here. That got it? Not quite. And you can see that just on the rim of that bowl there. And what I'll probably have to do in carving that up back, I've changed the shape of the bowl slightly so I could either bring this out or just make it a, a, a smaller rim. Okay, we want to keep that nice and circular or oval shape, that nice kind of natural shape if we can. But saying that, my favorite spoon is that um, that walnut one. And that's a little bit kind of wonky and a little bit, you know, handcrafted. So, you know, there's different, different schools of thought on this. Some people like that super nice finish the nice clean timber um some people would have this all faceted so you'd have your you know you you would still see the cut marks that you've made with the tool um especially on that underside that back edge um that can look really nice really effective 
it's not picking up the grain like I thought it would. Um, a little bit there. Um, again, just switching my grip. So I'm coming back towards myself and I'm using the, the timber as that limiter. And just removing that material. I'm just going to move my thumb. Really, that should be on the steel to, to help control that cut. But I'm using these fingers here now against my hand to, uh, to limit it. Okay, just gives you an idea of what I'm doing here. Okay, so what I'm trying to do, I've got a little bit of torn grain just in here. You can't really see it from that angle, but I'm just trying to cut down to it and get rid of that little kind of dip or low spot. Good stuff. So just carry on with that until you're happy with the depth, that you're happy with uh, the kind of finish that you're getting off it. That's nice. Let's try and bring in that little hook knife. It's nice to have all these tools just at hand. Um, oh, that's doing a great job. Okay, so I'm bringing that across the grain and that's just lifting out that kind of um, scruffy finish off of the other tool. You'll find different ways of holding these tools as you, as you work. This time I'm using this hand as a pivot. I'm swinging off of my hand, all right? Anything to stop you from any of this business. That hook knife is giving me that nice natural curve that's going straight off that edge into the bowl. And that's just picked up on the grain there. All right, if I carry on with that cut, it's going to try and force the knife deeper into the cut. So I'm going to come back the other way. I'm going to use my little gentle sweep on this gouge to come back the other way. And you're going to get spots that are quite difficult. Like here, I've come back the other way and it's doing the same thing. It's catching this way now. So we just need to be mindful of that. Maybe I come across the grain ever so slightly. Nice and gentle, small cuts. And just working on that shape, bringing that low spot down and just kind of um, improving the shape. I don't want any lumps and bumps so let's just quickly whiz those off. So my favorite tools for something like this um, would be your Kirschen gouges, all right. Um, the nice deep one for a deeper spoon. Um, and then these little hook knives and stuff, really useful, um, just to kind of give us that nice crisp line across the top. You know, get a bit more control and leaves a lovely finish as well. Okay, you haven't got that kind of tooled or torn grain. And I'd hone that just before I get started. Each and every time, keep that polish nice. Um, keep it sharp, keep it honed. Um, again, there's things like um, the, the kind of uh, bent gouges um, or you, know, you see the shape of that one. Again, if you're doing like a massive big spoon, that's the sort of one that's going to allow you to cut this bottom face. Okay, you can imagine as this gets deeper and deeper, some of those um, areas are quite hard to get to. So you need something with a bit of curve because otherwise your gouge is just going straight down in. Okay, and you can't 
sort of scoop it out or cut the bottom and you'll end up with two opposing cuts meeting in the middle. We want to get that nice sweep at the bottom. Okay. So there's a little bit of work to be done on that. Um, not too much because like I say, it's, it's a very shallow spoon. Um, let me just try and tidy up a couple of little bits. Any high spots? And this cherry is really nice. It's, it's really behaving itself. It's not causing me too much trouble. Where the, um, the beach one, it was so tough, so tough to, to cut. Good. Oh, nick the edge there. Let's come in with something like this and just remove that. Good. I would sand that. Get rid of any of these little spots here. Um, perhaps even wet it. Wet it, allow the grain to, to stand up. Quite often you can um, eliminate things like that, that little bit of torn grain, just by putting a bit of water on there, allowing the grain to rise and then sanding it back. Okay, because it kind of swells it a little bit. It will bring that low spot up uh, where it can be dressed with the abrasive. Good. So we're going to um, we're going to rough this out now on the um, on the bandsaw. You know, perhaps if if it wasn't live, I would spend a little bit more time just getting that bang on, um, getting this bowl all nice and and smooth and that kind of constant curve. It's not too bad to be fair, um, but we want to we want to move on. Show you the next part of of what we're going to be doing. So just opening up that parrot vise. Lovely thing that, really sturdy. Um, and, you know, the reason we, we carved this bowl out first is because it can be quite difficult to hold something like that, okay? Especially in the vise, um, you know, the more contact we can get along these jaws and onto the, the workpiece, the better, really. Um, so we've, we've carved the bowl first, then we're gonna um, shape or rough out the rest of the spoon. Okay, so we're going to come across onto the bandsaw. Um, I'm going to put the extraction on. It's a little bit louder, this extraction, um, but we need that. We want to pull away that, um, that dust in the air, okay? I'm going to use my ears at a moment, so just um, you know, beg my pardon while, we're, um, while we fire this one up. I'm bringing this guarding down. So, little button at the back. So, right, that's for the door. We've got a little sunscreen there, and we just tighten that one off. Um, down nice and close to the, to the workpiece there. Actually, I'm going to cut that face first. So, let's go back up with our guarding and guide system. Make sure we've got room to go right the way around. And then just turn the saw on. And I'm going to pick up on this second line, this, um, this slightly thinner part of the project, okay? Just rest the blade on to create a little shoulder. And then we can start to push this through. You might see some sparks happening off of those um, ceramic guys. Perfectly normal. And I'm cutting just outside my line. You know, we're going to come back with all sorts of tools. That's about as comfortable as, you know, as close as I'm comfortable getting. Lovely little push stick on the back of the machine there. Nice close at hand. And we'll go right the way through. And I'm just going to pop that there a moment. 
One thing I've forgotten to do is to um, put my glue gun on. So I need to glue this back together. So let's get that warming up while we're waiting. Just plug that in. This is, a, you know, just a standard kind of glue gun. This has the yellow stick in, um, which is for your wood. Right, let's have a little sort out while that's just heating up. Have a little tidy up of the bench. The other thing with these carving tools, um, it, like we said before, they're really sharp. Um, it really, you've got to be careful where you're putting them. Um, you know, don't put them on the edge of your bench. You might lean on them. Um, I've put a couple of little dogs in the bench here because they're, you know, well, they're hexagonal handles. That's to, you know, make sure they don't roll too much. Um, but I put them between a couple of dogs and then I know they're not going to roll off the bench. Okay. Um, put them back in their leather chisel roll if you've got one. Um, but certainly we don't want to put these in a box all kind of clashing together because we've spent time sharpening and polishing that edge. Um, we don't want to, you know, then whacking against each other and putting nicks in one another. Um, so, yeah. All right. So I'm buying a bit of time, really, for my glue gun to heat up. Okay, so we've got a question. Well-timed question. Thank you. So Keith kind of wants to know, and you can answer this as straight as you can, but okay, why not turn the handle on a lathe? Absolutely, you turn the handle on a lathe, yeah. Yeah, I think, actually, Colwyn's got a, a spatula demo coming up. He's going to show you just how to do that. Um, for me in here, um, we're, the, we're in the craft workshop today, so I'm doing um, using hand tools, using knives and things like that. I wouldn't be adverse to turning it on the lathe, and actually you get a lovely little, a little handle on that. Um, yeah, why not? It's a good point. Um, I'm just going to carve it. I'm going to carve it because they're the tools that I use um, more regularly than the, the turning. Um, like I said a couple of weeks ago, we've got um, Jason and Cole in here, um, you know, great turners. And, um, well, of, of course, they would let me in the workshop to, to, to use the lathes. Um, but, you know, I, I, I've got my own thing going on. I want to do a bit of carving, a little bit of um, pyro and stuff like that. Um, and also, you know, we can produce shapes like that in here using band saws, um, scroll saws to rough things out. Um, I think you'd struggle to turn that on the lathe with a bit of off-center turning or something. Um, so it's to do with the shape. Um, and the one that I made before is super flat. And I really like it's flat. It's got a flat top, um, apart from this little nick for your, for your thumb. Um, but it's got this lovely rounded bottom. And I just love the way that feels in my hand. When I made it, I was, I was quite proud of myself. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of try and emulate that. And, um, and, you know, each time we go through the repetition of making one of these things, we learn a little bit more. Um, so I quite like, you know, I'm going to stick, stick with what we've got um, here. But the turned handles do look lovely. And, and keep an eye out for Colwyn's um, demonstration on spatulas. Um, they're beautiful handles. I've already seen them. They look lovely. Okay, hopefully my glue gun's um, heated up now. I can see it. It's got a little dribble on the end there. So we're going to use that what i'm trying to do if i just look at my oh, throw it on the ground if i just look at my blank here okay what i'm going to try and do is in the in the middle here i want to glue down the edges okay so we're going to cut that off then and then i've got no clean up with the glue no mucky kind of um glue to scrape off or cut off with the chisel so, a bit of glue. I'm going to go down here and then back up the other side and a little splodge on that corner there. Put that to one side. You want to work fairly quick if the glue gun will let you um, to get that on there because this hardens. Of course, as it hits the timber, it cools off quite quickly and it'll harden. Okay, turn that off. That's really important. Okay, that glue gun is easily forgotten. Um, you know, make sure you turn that off if you're if you're using it right after you've used it. 
Okay. So goggles back on. We're going back in. And this is almost like free cutting, uh, 3D cutting on the on the scroll saw. So we've cut it on that plane. Okay. And now we're going to cut the actual shape of the spoon. And those two cuts intersecting is what's going to give us our, you know, our kind of roughed out blank in the middle. Good. So back to the um, bandsaw. I'm not going to use my ear protection this time because I feel it interferes with the microphone, but excuse me while I put that on. Let's bring our guide down. Let's keep everything nice and safe. Make sure the machine's turned off, it is. And I'm going to drop that guide nice and close to the workpiece and we can rotate all the way around. So, where am I going to start? I think a little relief cut on both sides. So I've got um, a, a little line here. I'm going to just do a relief cut as we come into the neck of the spoon. So I'll pop one in there. And one in there. And now when we come around this shape, that part's going to fall away. We're not going to try and force it around this corner. Okay. So let's come down this edge first. Sorry, let's come around here. You can see that better. Um, and I've got a little flat on the top of the spoon. So I'm going to bring that flat in, form a little shoulder. And then pivot that around. Always be aware of where your hands are. And don't be tempted to flick away any waste on the table. Again, I'm going to sit that up against the blade. And with a very slight curve on that bandsaw blade, it's going to start to form a little shoulder. Again, cutting outside our line. Um, and I've got a little cut in here to do. Getting a bit close to the blade again. So let's use our push stick. Let's form that shoulder. And now we've just got these two long ones to cut. Now, if this was a, a symmetrical spoon, um, I would cut one half of it. We've got a center line down here. Cut one half and then use that off cut. Flip it round and draw your pencil line in again. That's going to give you that perfect symmetry. Push off for a waist there. Back on with the extraction. Uh, I'm just going to come down this line. Quite a steep curve around here, or um, you know, a fast curve, I should say. Um, so what I'm doing is let's get rid of that waist. Um, bringing that line up to there. And I'm going to grab it right from the other side, and Come out of that cut. Rest our blade where we want it. Form that shoulder. 
and then bring that cut around. Changing my grip. Last little bit with the push stick. And just turn the machine off and off with the extractor. Okay, I'm just waiting for that machine to stop so I can retrieve our spoon and that should come off nice and easy. Okay, so we've got a kind of roughed out blank for the spoon now. All right, it's got that nice little corner shape. Remember to get into the, the edge of the pan and stop the fudge burning. Good. So we can come back onto our, um, onto our main um, picture here. So like I say, that's, that's roughed out. For me, that would be a lovely little project to kind of visit every now and then. Okay, when I've got a spare five minutes here and there, I would come to this. Um, you could use a little knife. Okay, let's show you that grip. So I've got two hands on there. If we come across onto this one here, that's lovely. Um, I've got, what I'm doing is I'm holding the timber like this. I've got the knife up against the edge or the, the corner. And I'm, sorry, I'm pushing with this thumb. My dominant hand, my right hand is, is holding the knife, even touching the back of the blade there. And this one is pushing through the cut. Okay. So we start to get our shaving there. And we can start to round this off. All right, you see that grain direction? It's pulling me in there. We're gonna get some of that breakout if we're not careful. But a little twist of the knife brought that cutting edge back out. Okay, but you can see that grain direction. Really, it would wanna be cut that way. So we're, we're working with the grain. All right. And this would be it. This would be this would be it for me. I would spend the rest of the time just playing with the shape, going through different tools. And this is really satisfying. This is a lovely little thing to do. If you've got, you know, 10 minutes, you can start carving um, and just keep revisiting it. Keep adding to that shape, um, putting different tools to it if you've got different sorts of tools um, and you can shape this however you want you could bring in your burr again okay you could round that off really quickly with a burr um, one tool i really like um, is the, um, the power file i just want to show you a little bit on that again it's quite dusty so we won't spend ages with it i just want to give you a little taster of what it can do and I love this tool. It's a really, really nice, easy peasy way of carving and creating shapes quite quickly. All right. I'll probably get told off by all the traditionalists out there, but this is really just like a little mini belt sander. I love the thing. It works a treat. So just undo the knot, sorry. Good. I'll plug it in here. And that's it. You've got a variable speed on this. I'm going to go just under halfway. It's give me that control um, and I'm not whizzing material off too quickly. Remember, I've not got all that much material to play with. Um, probably just under half an inch there. But what I want to try and do is get a bit of shape on the underside of this, this spoon. Um, so this is a, like a belt sander. If you push it, it's got a little bit of softness to it. Okay, that belt has a little bit of flex. And as you approach it to a square edge, um, it kind of it kind of squidges in a bit. It'll give you that nice little round. All right. So 
pull the trigger and off it goes all right again this has got like a little cyclone type um dust collector on the back um, um that will bring up most of the dust but it is a dusty little thing um but i just love it so let's let's have a go with this so trigger goes in And by making lots of kind of small strokes, you can really see that curve come in already. All right. Five minutes of that and it will be done. But like I say, it's a dusty little thing. This isn't something, you know, like we could whittle in, indoors. Um, we could take our knives. We could take our, um, you know, if you've got a Sloyd knife or, or any of these kind of flex cut type knives, um, we, we could whittle away at that bit by bit. And we could do that at the, at the dining table or, you know, if you've got a little tray or something in the lounge watching TV. But, you know, something like this is going to force you out into the workshop um, where you can make a bit more mess. Okay. If you didn't fancy that, um, the belts that come with it are, are really useful as well. So these little kind of um, ring belts, um, you can cut them. Um, and that's a really good way of rounding things over, of knocking off square edges. Let me just twist that around in the, in the vise so you can see what's going on. Pop in that side. Good. Um, so I want my little belt. All I'm doing is looping it around. You see that natural curve it has. That's what it's going to sound. That's the profile it's going to sound. You can see how quickly it knocked those corners over. Just taking that back and forth. And you can keep going with that until it's fully round and it will give you a lovely shape. So you see how much that material's coming off? You can use that and those cloth back abrasive if you want something wider this is just a cloth back abrasive all right but you know there's there's lots of people carving spoons out there there's lots of people with different techniques on how to do these things these are really just a few suggestions get you shaping get you um, using different types of tools and and give you those options of you know what can you use what what sort of uh, what tools have you got and what can you make the most of um, and i just wanted to ask what what kind of projects people are doing at home this month we've been our um we've been doing running our make it in march competition uh, where where people are sending in their photos of projects you've done at home um, we really want to see those we've got um we've got a week left um until we're into april we really want to see your um, your Make It In March projects. Um, Lily's going to put on the information in the chat, um, and it'd be lovely to see your what, what sort of stuff you guys are doing at home. So bring them in. A great prize as well. There's, a, there's about a, a grand's worth of um, tools and stuff to be won. Um, check out the prizes. Um, well worth a look. And if you just recently completed a project or something like that, show us your photos. You never know. Um, the guys are judging it, and so we've got some some top class judges. Um, yeah, I think really, if you wanted to finish, um, uh, sorry, if you wanted to finish a spoon like this, um, I use this food safe finish, okay, or mineral oil. All right, and that's going to do a really good job of um, of, of protecting the timber. Um, what you'll find on things like this. If you're, um, you know, obviously it's going to go into water, it's going to, um, or, or food, and it's going to, um, you know, 
that that liquid, especially the heat in the liquid, will um, will raise the grain. Okay, every now and then, a bit of fine abrasive, so something like 400 grit, 400, 600, um, just whiz over um, over the spoon with that. That will lay all the grain back down. And then just a little bit of this, if you've already oiled it, a little bit on a cloth just to wipe it over, um, and that will bring your spoon back to a really, um, really nice uh, thing. Okay, so we've got another question. One more thing. I'm pretty sure, Ben, that I've seen you've got a spoon that you've done some pyrography on. So Lawrence has kind of said, could we do a spoon in the future where we do that and then decorate with a pyrography pattern? Absolutely, yeah. So there's loads of stuff you can do with these. Um, check out the Welsh Love Spoons. They are beautiful. Um, they, you know, um, a bit of scroll saw involved in that as well. So they've usually got like a flatter handle. Um, you know, you can we can... Um, cut parts out with the with the scroll saw do a bit of piercings where we we take the blade through the the um the handle um and then carve it all um so there's loads you can do with these spoons um i really like the there's like quite decorative ones with really thin handles and like a really nice little rounded bowl i think sometimes they're turned um but there's loads of spoons out there and these things have so much character um you know they're really lovely little objects um I would definitely encourage you to have a go at, 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 um, at carving a spoon. It doesn't matter what you use, um, as long as you're safe, as long as we're using those good practices and we're not, you know, going too crazy with um, with big cuts and, and things like that. Keep it small uh, to begin with. As you develop your confidence, you can start to take bigger cuts and, and things like that. But certainly if you're um, just starting off on your, your journey with carving, um, similar to me, I've not been carving too long. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and as, uh, you know, as I get more confident, I'm taking bigger cuts and doing bigger projects. Um, so, you know, stay tuned. We've got, we've got lots more carving to come. Um, but, yeah, absolutely, we can, we can do pyrography on them. We can do whatever you want. Um, I, I really like the two-toned ones where they look like they've been dipped in something. They've got like a, a rubberized handle and things like that. There's loads of cool stuff out there. Um, this was really just a little taster um, to, to kind of get you going, um, perhaps a little bit of inspiration, and just to show you those um, the, the practice of those safe cuts. Remember, if we're using knives, we're keeping our hands behind the knife and we're taking those controlled cuts. If we're using chisels, you need to hold your workpiece really safe. So it could be on the bench with dogs and a hold down clamp. It could be in something like the parrot vise here. Just make sure um, you know, you're, you're using those safe practices um, and we're, we're not holding things in our hands with um, carving gouges, okay? Whittling's different. So Again, use that push cut, use that um, kind of pivot cut, or a kind of sweeping. And I'm using two thumbs, one on top of the other, to really help go through that material. All right. And it's about control, it's not about applying more force, it's about limiting your cuts and having full control over the tool. Okay. Because, you know, it cuts through wood so easily you know, it's going to do the same thing um, to potentially fingers and things like that. So always hands behind the cutting edge. Um, never, you know, hold your workpiece up too close. Sometimes it's really awkward to hold. You might be carving something like this, but I know that's just part and parcel of it, I'm afraid. But um, thanks again for joining us. Um, tomorrow, come and join Jason. He's, um, he's looking at the ultimate edge. So the kind of linishing um, type sharpening system. Um, some really cool hints and tips that Jason's going to give you. Um, anything else we need to talk about? Oh, sorry, we started about finishes. This um, this finish, really good. Go on straight on your spoons. It will take it in, um, but you just need to dress them every now and then um, to keep them kind of rejuvenated. Um, and if you are using them in, in hot stuff, um, you're going to raise the grain at some point. So it'll get a kind of almost a fluffy feel. Um, quick bit of sanding, high grit, and then reapply your food safe finish. We don't want any of those um, kind of nasty dryers and stuff you get in 
um, in some oils. Um, so just have a look at the label, make sure everything's nice and safe, food safe, toy safe. That's what we're looking for. Um, but yeah, that's a, a, a quick little insight into, into spoon carving or, or how I like to um, approach spoon carving. There's loads of information out there um, for you guys to have a look at and loads of inspirational, um, you know, spoons that other people have carved. Okay. So thanks again for joining us. Um, like I say, back tomorrow with Jason and let's see you all make it in March um, pictures. So if you could, you could um, send them in. Um, there could be a lovely little prize at the end of it waiting for you. Okay. So I'm Ben. Um, thanks again for joining us.